Happy Friday, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the latest iteration of Weather Center Nazario. Today, I have some pretty fundamental information and important information to communicate to all of you. So thank you very much for joining me this Friday afternoon. I hope your week has been wonderful. We're going to talk tropics. Let's dive right in. We're starting off on National Hurricane Center's homepage, and Philippe and Rena are still in close proximity to one another. They started the tango yesterday. Yes, the tropical tango this time yesterday, and they have not let up just yet. They're still twirling and pinwheeling out over the central Atlantic, kind of feeding off one another. We'll talk about that here in a second when I show you their latest stats. The Fujiwara effect is in full effect for that matter. We talked about it yesterday as well. If you haven't watched my YouTube short kind of breaking down what that Fujiwara effect really is to the nitty gritty, I highly encourage you to do so. And if you haven't followed me on Instagram, I have the full video there at WXCenter underscore Nazario. So looking at the latest analysis on Philippe, we have winds of 45 miles an hour and 1,003 millibars in the center of circulation. Now blink and you'll miss it. This is Tropical Storm Rena now, guys. We're at 45 miles an hour and 1,003 millibars in the center. No, I'm not kidding. No, this is not a Photoshopped image. These two have conjoined in that binary connection in the tropics, and they are essentially feeding off one another as we speak. They're more or less bouncing the tropical energy from one circulation to the other. It's very cool how this phenomena works. They're inside of this very remote sphere of influence because they're in proximity to one another within that 850-mile threshold. It's honestly remarkable what we have going on here. Now that they've more or less connected out there in the Central Atlantic, they're feeding off one another and they're in their own small sphere of influence between the two cyclones. There's essentially nothing else really playing a role in their forward progress or their intensity outside of the wind shear to the north, but at this point in time, we have battling low pressure centers, we have battling energy sources, we have battling upper level outflow winds. There's a lot of variables going on, and they're genuinely going head to head in every aspect of that sentence. Thankfully, we'll go ahead and look at the forecasted tracks for both of these systems, and you can rest assured that it looks like the Caribbean nations as well as Bermuda are dodging yet not one but two more bullets this tropical hurricane season. For the sake of time, folks, I went ahead and overlaid both projected paths side by side to one another just so you can get another glance at those stats side by side as well. You can see the max sustained winds of 45 from both storms, and as both of them eject out into the central Atlantic far enough to the east of Bermuda to not pose a significant threat to that landmass, it looks like they are going to start to dwindle, especially Rena, as he unfortunately is projected to lose the tropical fight, the tropical battle with Tropical Storm Philippe. And he actually could take on a strengthening trend as you get over the next couple of days as we go through the weekend and into next week, and these two can uncouple from one another. What's also very interesting to note is if you track both these storms out and you go through time and you kind of look at where the Latin long coordinates fall for that 8 a.m. Wednesday, 8 a.m. Tuesday time frame, they are going to come close to intersecting. And I do anticipate, and other official sources suggested as well, that Rena is inevitably going to get absorbed into Philippe's center of circulation. Pardon me, I don't know what just happened right there. But again, guys, this is not the main area I want to fixate on, especially since these are two weaker cyclones. I'm going to say that and put it out in the open. They are tropical storms, both of which have been struggling to hold on to their intensity. We're not under any imminent threat from either of these storms, so I'm not going to put a whole lot of energy into this. Today, what I want to talk about, despite the remarkable phenomena that we have in the Atlantic, which by the way, I hope all of you out there, especially fellow weather enthusiasts, are taking notes right now. This is a pretty interesting spectacle we're getting to witness out in the tropical Atlantic. We had our Labor Day barbecue with the four different storms early Earlier in August, Franklin, Adalia, Gert, and Jose hanging out over the Northwest Atlantic back in August, which is pretty incredible to see. And now we're getting a round two of a very similar influence between two storms to where we can actually see that Fujiwara effect at 100%. But ladies and gentlemen, in terms of the Gulf of Mexico and the Western Caribbean especially, I have some very interesting large-scale news that I want to pass along to you guys. We're not going to hone in on anything specific. We're not going to focus on one or two specific model runs. We're not going to talk trends today. We're actually going to talk overall environmental patterns that could suggest and do kind of suggest October is not out of the realm of being a very active at least first half of the month for us. Let's dive right in. Now for this piece of the episode, we're going to do things just a little bit differently. What I've done for you guys is I've gone on to Climate Prediction Center's website and I downloaded their most recent up-to-date MJO PowerPoint brief that they disseminate not only widespread to the internet, but also discuss internally within their organization. And what I find very interesting about this is if you look at bullet point three, as a result of tropical cyclone activity is forecast to increase across the the eastern pacific by week two possibly extending into the western caribbean 
The Atlantic Maine development region may also see a renewed burst of activity following a break in the near term, although climatology favors this region to begin to quiet down during October. Now, if we go back up to the first two bullet points, the RRM-based MGO index returned to the unit cycle with dynamical models depicting a largely incoherent propagation during the next two weeks. We've talked about that on and off on Weather Center. Despite the weak RRM-based MJO signals, the upper-level vorticity potentially filtering depicts a much more coherent eastward propagating MJO signal from the Indian Ocean Maritime Continent to the Western Hemisphere by mid-October. What is all this fancy terminology? I'll show you. All right, so now we're once again looking at 200 millibar vertical velocity anomalies. This is basically what our MJO oscillation looks like. And as you get into the very beginning of October and at the very tail end of this month as well, if you look out over to the top portions of the chart, we're under pretty predominant unfavorable conditions right now for the Caribbean and the Gulf. As to be expected, all the activity has been out in the eastern Atlantic. Things have been firing off one by one by one, and they've all thankfully been fish storms. No real harm or foul to anybody out there in the Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico, the Bahamas, and naturally the United States. What CPC has been suggesting is despite, see if you guys notice during these first three panels, you see how kind of discombobulated those upward vertical velocities are as it propagates or moves across the Pacific Ocean. As you go through time, you notice that ironically it starts to consolidate once again over the East Pacific, the Gulf of Mexico, and predominantly the Western Caribbean, the source regions we've been discussing for the last few episodes of Weather Center. You can see this if you look real close right at about the October 9th time frame frame when a lot of our models and ensembles have been predicting we could see some development out there. We go underneath that favorable environment as you step through the chart and it really starts to organize and go very aggressively into the favorable environment by the time we get into middle October, right about Friday the 13th and to the back end closer to Halloween, about the 24th to the 29th, just before the fateful holiday, we get unfavorable environment as we get ready to wrap into November and hopefully say bon voyage to the 2023 hurricane season. Moving right along, we're going to take a quick glance at the 15-day GFS I apologize for that. My cursor was out of whack. The GFS is a little more lackluster, and I think that's why it's been on and off with that Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico development on the main run of the GFS. If you look, we see some of that MJO propagation to the east, and it does come in, albeit a lot more weaker and more discombobulated than what the Euro is suggesting. The Euro has been slowly but surely trending into a more vigorous MJO and Central American gyre, for that matter, for our neck of the woods in the tropical Atlantic, i.e. the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. Here's our 12Z Euro run of what the velocity potential looks like for across the globe pretty much. And the general average, the consensus here, this is our control member right here we're looking at. You can see that we have nothing but favorable environment expected for a large majority of the Atlantic as we go through the very beginning of October all the way through to close about to the 9th, maybe the 10th, Friday the 13th time frame. And then it starts to weaken out there for most of the Atlantic, that MDR area like they mentioned in the CPC brief, but then we see another resurgence for the back end of October as we go further and further down the road. We get that unfavorable environment evacuated, and we see another round of anomalous activity, particularly closer to the Western Caribbean. If you take a look at where these blobs are indicated on our chart here, you can refer down here to this small key. This is Latin long and the geographic location, essentially, of where these anomalies are positioned. And a lot of the favorable conditions are over the Gulf and the extreme Western Caribbean. Very interesting to note. We're not, like I said, we're not talking specific models. We're not talking precision forecasting for storms and development. I'm just showing you guys in terms of what we've been discussed for the last couple of days, the environment itself is gearing up for something. Now we're going to look at 12Z probability and ensembles with the Euro and especially the GFS because take a look at this. This is our 12Z Euro today and you can see that we are predicting that the Eastern Pacific is going to get active just like the brief mentioned. As you go along into 144 hours, notice as you move the loop, we start to get a lot more agreement by our euro now that the probabilities of tropical depression formation do begin to elevate, especially as you get right around that same time frame we've been talking about, guys. The 10th of October into Friday the 13th, we're really starting to see the Caribbean and even across the state of Florida light up for some potential development. Now, again, this is within the 20 to 30 percentile probability, but we've been seeing it all year. When the neuro model starts to sniff out certain features, it's a little steadfast in development. It doesn't go to zero to 100 like the GFS 
does. The euro is a little more complacent at first and begins to build that evidence on a day-to-day -day basis. And I've been watching this as well. I haven't presented it to you guys because there wasn't anything really worth highlighting. It's been very on and off, but now as of today, 12Z, I've seen another incremental increase to support that we might want to start watching closer to home. This is where things get really interesting. This is the Euro 12Z ensembles for mean sea level pressure. And if you watch across the Gulf and the Caribbean, I'm not hyping. Watch the ensembles. So we're starting the loop on October 8th, which is right around where the Canadian model was anticipating development. You can already see some favorability in the Western Caribbean for some sort of a low pressure forming on the Euro. As you go through time, watch what happens and pay particular attention to the state of Florida, guys. And I'm not saying that to fear monger, just watch. We're going to go through the loop and you can see a widespread area of lowering pressures begin to form up. And you can see that first entity or two that comes out of the Caribbean swings right into central Florida. We get some development off the east coast and then you can see how the rest of the Caribbean and the rest of the Gulf of Mexico start to light up. We get another member taking something through the state. We get another member taking something through the state. And then it almost looks like the ensembles are predicting we could see wave after wave or it could also be indicating that it might take a little longer for our one system and we've been kind of tracking the last few days to get going. Endless possibilities. These are ensemble products, a little more accurate long term. We're at the very tail end of the run. And again, I emphasize we want to use our ensembles for long term predictions or at least agreement. This is not necessarily highlighting probability. It's just showing how much of the euro actually agrees we could see something form and where their general trend is it's going to go and it's not looking too good now we are going to look a little more point based to give us a little bit of evidence to support something forming up and i've noticed a very interesting trend between the gfs and the canadian and then the likes of the icon and the euro together the icon and the euro are doing something a little different they want to still form something up right around that same general time frame but what's interesting is it looks like something either breaks off from rena or philippe during their fujiwara dance of the tropical cyclones in the Atlantic, or something tries to sneak in under the radar following just to the south of that 10 degree north latitude line, which I've been looking at climatology as well. Like I said, guys, I've been obsessing over this to try to give you as best of the information as I can. Climatology shows that when we get a storm that forms at that 10 degree lat line or to the south of it, they do tend to move into the Caribbean a lot more vigorously than our storms that form well to the north of it. And if you guys think back, every time we've had an invest area or a disturbance for the most part during interior or the heart of the hurricane season, they've been at about the 13, 14, maybe in the 15 degree lat line. These indications are coming in a little further to the south. Let's take a look. So we go through time and you can see that we have Philippe out there wrapping up with Rena and they start to dissipate. Look at this little cluster of vorticity riding that 10 degree lat line. And also look at this upper level low that's parked over the southeast once again. We can see some increased phenomena with that as well. But watch as that blip traverses the windward and leeward islands and works its way into the Caribbean. It starts to take on a little bit more of a consolidated look and start to try to organize right around where our Euro ensembles are predicting we could see something take shape. So on the lower side of agreement 20 30 percent of the members but it's been trending up so that's why i bring it up it still looks low in probability some of you may think i'm looking at one or two runs in particular but trust me i've been analyzing every step of the way and that's why i'm presenting the case that i am to you today this is our 12z german model the icon and if you watch out where philippe and rena are currently doing their dance you can see that there is a little bit of breakaway vorticity almost or it's almost like the remnant portion of rena tries to slingshot to the south of that anti-cyclone that builds back in in their wake and it begins to push some area of vorticity through the leeward islands as more or less an aggressive tropical wave but as you look further into the future you start to see that preset band begin to consolidate a little bit further right in line with where the euro ensembles and that deterministic model i showed you tries to form something up so it's very interesting what we have going on here two models suggest formation closer to the yucatan the gulf of mexico other models suggest formation a little bit further to the east but around the same general time frame. So regardless of what each model is showing, it's safe to say at this point, between the days of the October 9th time frame all the way through to the 13th, 14th, and maybe even the 15th, we got to keep our eyes peeled. This whole segment was dedicated to showing you the different ingredients that could help to spawn tropical cyclone development. I'm not going to walk you through the shear or the moisture because moisture is definitely there and shear is going to be on and off at least closer to the Gulf Coast, Florida Peninsula because of our troughs and the cold frontal boundaries.
countries we have working their way through the United States as I make this video. That'll just about wrap it up, guys. I hope you've had a great week. I hope you have enjoyed this video in particular. I'm glad to have stepped out of the realm of what we traditionally do to give you guys a different layer of information to bring to the table. I hope it made sense to you. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments or tune in tonight for our 8 p.m. Tropics talk. I'm happy to help you out, answer any questions, comments, or concerns that you have. And naturally, we're going to have a great time in that forum as well. I love chatting with everybody who does tune in on a regular basis. Lots to watch out there. It doesn't seem like October is going to give us that much of a break. We might have a bit of a reprieve as we wait for Philippe and Rena to do their own thing and dance off into the sunset together. But for now, I'm still glued and I'm fixated on the Gulf and the Caribbean because if we do get something to spin up, guys, it goes without saying. They're going to get steered in the wrong direction. Let's put it to you that way. You've seen the ensembles. You've seen the data. You've seen the large-scale big picture pattern, and you've heard it from the official source who predicts those larger scale features that can help to increase tropical cyclone development. And again, we're not going to bring it up this video, but I'm really starting to see the Euro GFS Canadian, even the Korean model, the Korean model and the UK met, I'm looking at those as well, are trying to spin something up right around the same time. And they're bringing back that familiar low pressure in the low to mid levels of the environment across Central America, i.e., the gyre. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for watching. We're going to wrap up this video now. Please like, share, please share, as a matter of fact, and subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already, or if you're brand new to the channel, I would really appreciate the continued support. Thank you to all of my subscribers who followed me along to this point. Thank you for tuning in and listening to all this information. I know it's kind of a fire hose, if you will, but I'm doing my best for each and every one of you out there, because if we do get something close to home, it could be a little more lethal than the likes of what we've seen for the number of storms since about the time of Lee and Margo. We'll see you tonight at 8 p.m for our Tropics Talk. Until then, this is Weather Center Nazario, signing out.